it is indeed my privilege and pleasure to welcome our speaker this morning, Sandra Cooper. She's a facilitator extraordinaire and a speaker that truly inspires and uplifts. So without further ado, let me welcome Sandra to the podium. Thanks, Vance. Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you to this magnificent oasis. Isn't it an oasis? Right in the heart of the city. It's our Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. We are truly surrounded by nature's bounty. It is lush, it is green, and it is awesome, especially after the plenty rain we've been getting, eh? And the good news is that we are here, above ground, and able to experience it. Isn't that wonderful? Let us say together, today is a brand new day. I will enjoy every moment to the fullest. Today is a brand new day. I will enjoy every moment to the fullest. A very special welcome to those who are visiting, welcome, and especially to those joining us online. You all made a choice to be here, and I am deeply grateful to have you connecting in consciousness with us. Now the year is almost to an end. Where did it go? And I've been pondering on the number of people that I know or know of who have passed over these past 11 months. And maybe you have too. Good acquaintances, friends, and family of friends, public figures, and for us here as a, as a um, spiritual family, dear to our own hearts, our beloved maestro, Noel Dexter. It got me thinking about my own mortality, as loved one, one's passing often does. Thankfully, I don't feel any sense of fear about me making my transition, as I believe that life doesn't begin with birth and it doesn't end in death. We see this idea woven into our Declaration of Principles, which says, we believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continu continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. My thinking moved me to ask, how shall I live knowing that I will die? What will be my gift to my family, my spiritual community, my country, and the world? Good questions, eh? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Mm-hmm. So this morning, I invite you to explore with me, because I asked spirit and spirit responded. And the guidance that I got is in my message this morning that's titled, Full-Blown, Out-of-the-Box Living. Full-Blown, Out-of-the-Box Living. Now there are two friends of mine that I can describe as living full-blown, out-of-the-box lives. And they have both inspired me for many, many years. One of them is the first to hit the dance floor when there's a live band playing music. <laughs> At the Calabash Literary Festival a few years ago, there she was, beautifully coordinated. I think it was turquoise and purple with a touch of shocking pink. But la piece de resistance was the miniskirt. Oh, did I say shoes to match? So I marveled at how fabulous she looked. And I asked, oh, 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 one more thing. There was a pair of 80-something-year-old legs under the miniskirt. So I told her how fabulous she looks, and I asked her, how you manage to always look so good? 
Well, I didn't, I held back the part about at your age. <laughs> well, her response was, and this really, really impressed very deeply on my, my, my consciousness. Sandra, <laughs> if not me, who? <laughs> if not now, when? Can we give that eight to something year old person? <laughs> I'm not calling any names. I'm not calling any names. We'll keep it anonymous. <laughs> My second friend is forever free and laughing. Now, it's coincidence that she's in church. I'm getting goosebumps. God bombs. It's coincidence that she's in church this morning. I did not know she was in Jamaica. But I was writing about her behind her back. So she calls herself a joy enabler. She mentored me as a process facilitator. And I better make sure I take a deep breath now because I'm feeling the wash. She has authored two books. Climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Gone skydiving. And earlier this month, crossed the Thurongla Pass, I hope I said it right, in the Himalayas. Now what the back's covered are you doing in the Himalayas? It's the highest navigable mountain pass in the world. This woman truly lives without limits. Let's also give a round of applause to that anonymous friend. No. Now, I might not be quite so ready to jump out of an airplane. Not anytime soon, anyway. I mean, I'm adventurous, but maybe not just yet. How about you? Oh, airplane jumpers? All right, we can talk about it after. However, I'm very clear in my mind that I'm going to live boldly, passionately, and full out as I strive to make the rest of my life the absolute best of my life. Friends, no matter what age or stage you're at, consider that the rest of your life begins in this very moment. How can we make the most of it? The first thing we need to do, very first thing, is to deepen our relationship with God to make an unbreakable commitment to see God in everyone and everything. Doing so will shift our energy away from reacting and judging, from blaming, shaming, and complaining, from worry, doubt, and fear. And it will enable us to dream big, create new possibilities, and step, up, step off into uncertainty, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that God has your back. Now, as you plan for a new and exciting future, you might be clear about what you want, or perhaps not. If you fall into the latter grouping, a visioning exercise might give you the inspiration you need. Dr. Michael Beckwith from the Agape International Center in California provides this formula. Now, at the back of the program, you'll see a space for notes. So if you happen to have a pen, feel free to write. If not, not after the service, I'll be happy to give you the formula. Firstly, you need to find some quiet time where you know you will not be disturbed for a few minutes, maybe a half an hour. And sit down quietly with pen and paper and close your eyes and breathe deeply. Take some deep breaths in. And, some, and, and just release. And then you ask the first question. These are questions you're asking to the higher indwelling presence within you. First question, what is God's highest idea or highest vision for my life? What is God's highest vision for my life? The second question, what must I become in order to realize that vision, to empower this vision. 
What must I be? The third question, what must I release? Do you know, if, if you have a bottle that is full of liquid and it's full to the brim, you can't put anything else in it. So sometimes we have to let go of the things that don't, no longer serve us to be able to fill up with what we do want. The fourth question, what must I embrace? What must I accept? Is it love? Is it financial freedom? Becoming aware of my limiting thoughts? Even just that awareness is something to hug up. Oh, so this is how I feel. This is what I'm doing. This is what's stopping me. And in that space, we can understand what we are holding on to, and then we can work on the release. And you might want to ask, what else do I need to know in this moment? And the inspiration comes. I could say I don't know where it comes from, but that's not true. I know that that inspiration comes from my higher God self. It's not a voice booming in the sky. It's my own inner self that's speaking to me. And when I'm complete with this exercise, to just sit quietly again for a few more moments, say a prayer of thanksgiving. And in that space of thanksgiving, that thanksgiving really is great, being grateful for what perhaps hasn't yet arrived, hasn't yet manifested. Okay. And to surrender. Always to just let go and let God. Let's say this together. I am open. I am willing. I am ready to shine. I don't feel convinced. Let's hear it again. I am open, I am willing, I am ready to shine. Now, practicing the principles of truth taught here at the Temple of Light enables us to really experience the God presence and tap into that infinite power that lies within us and which is awaiting our command. Unwavering practice of spiritual principles helps us to mature spiritually. And when we mature spiritually, we open up our natural creativity and become more attractive to joyful and fulfilling experiences and adventures. In other words, we become like spiritual magnets for good stuff flowing, great relationships, awesome opportunities for business and work, money. Note too, that with a consistent spiritual practice, it becomes easier to hear the guidance of spirit that comes to us through visioning. It gets easier and easier. Sometimes I don't even have to sit down in that process. Just I lie in my bed at night and I say, okay, I may have a question, I'm not sure how to move forward about an issue. And before I turn over and turn that light off, I will say, hmm, spirit, what must I do about so and so. And the next morning, I feel a, an urge to do something, get something, call someone, take some kind of action. Part of being spiritual friends, you know, this thing of spiritual beings having a human experience, means that sometimes old paradigms remain in the shadows of our consciousness, reminding us that. I don't have the time. I can't afford it, you know. Boy, me, I, I'm too old. Or what about? Boy, I just don't have the energy anymore. Is, is, any of this resonates with you? <laughs> not, not many, eh? <laughs> now, firstly, we need to consider, let's look at all four of those, because those are the most common resistors that we have. The first one is time. Do I have enough time? Who can relate to that? 
Now, nature has no notion of time. It merely runs in cycles, in a steady rhythm that creates perfect balance and harmony. Much of the resistance and inertia holding us back are grounded in regret and, um, and worry from the past, or sorry, regret, stuff that didn't happen, if I coulda, woulda, shoulda, or we are into that space of worry and concern about what's going to happen. So we spend a lot of time ruminating in the past, or we are sort of jumping ahead in the future and looking at what hasn't yet happened and thinking about it. When we choose to live on the contrary, right here, right now, in the present, we open up this precious moment and we experience improved creativity, greater appreciation of the world around and the people as they are unfolding. We, we have release from stress because stress and worry come from things that have that happened before or that haven't happened yet. So when you're, when you're present, you move away from worrying about what hasn't yet happened. So be present. There's also greater openness and playfulness and a deeper awareness of our oneness with spirit. And of course, we're going to hear the still small voice speaking to us. Consider too that if the desire that you have is really, really strong, if you really want to do something, the time opens up. It happens every single time. Once you commit to it, you find the time. Now we have to deal with the I can't afford it story. There's just not enough, you know, finite resources. This thing just can't fit, you know. But we are not focusing on what we can see here, smell, taste, or touch. We're going beyond that. Remember that we are offsprings of the living God. And it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. So either you believe that or you don't. Okay? And so we have to know and recognize that we are one with an inexhaustible source. And we need to... Well, one of the things that works for me is to give thanks for something that hasn't yet happened. To create it in mind and give thanks for it and then forget about it. Because that in itself is a treatment. To declare God as source, to recognize our oneness with God, to declare that which we desire, give thanks for it and release it. Done. Move on. And so we surrender to its unfoldment. We don't know, we, we don't ask God how. A farmer doesn't pick up the seeds in his, um, in his farm to say, it growing yet, it growing yet, it growing yet. He plants it and he leaves it. And it grows because that's how nature works. That's how God works. Thirdly, the age-old story. <laughs> oh God, I'm too old for this. <laughs> Who says that being a certain age has to stop you from being, doing, or having anything that you want for yourself or your life, providing that it is life-giving and hurts no one. Getting older can mean confidence and wisdom for some, while for others it's a time of bitterness and regret. You, youth will give way to maturity. And eventually we move to a more joyful experience that can only be completely appreciated through the wisdom that comes from being on this planet for many, many decades. It is at this time that we have a choice. We can either listen to our ego, stop evolving and begin to decay. And decay is not about gray hairs and creaky, creaky knees. The decay is in, Lord, my sis, you know, you know, my arthritis, and boy, you know, can't go as far as I used to go and do as much as I used to. You boys, look at them people over there. I could go on about that, but mash down that. We, we don't want to experience that sense of, of decay. We can instead follow the voice of a higher power and begin to cooperate with nature through realizing our own creative potential that was given to us at birth. Now, which one will you choose? A, 
or B, A, give in to decay, B, listen to the voice of the higher power. Of course, now as for not having enough energy and being too tired, boy, you know, there's so much that I've been doing and my plate full and according to Christian science philosopher, Mary Baker Eddy, the scientific and permanent remedy for fatigue is to learn the power of mind over the body or the power of mind over any illusion of physical weariness and so destroy this illusion for matter cannot be weary and heavy laden it is a mind that makes us feel so got that mm -hmm. it's a mind she continues if man is governed by the law of divine mind, his body is in submission to everlasting life and truth and love. So we run things, the mind that we have control over, that we can use to make choice. That's what run things. So as we move forward, we need to contemplate some deliberate actions that we will take to ensure that the 525,600 minutes that we live every year, I'd worked it out to 31 point something million seconds. So it seems like we have a lot of time. You, know, you don't complain anymore about I don't have any time. Five, 500, 525,600 minutes. That's what we have in a year. So, we want to do some thing, things, and, in, and I'm going to just share with you some possibilities. And we want to make the, the year reflect the best in us, as us, and for us. First thing, I put this at the top of my list. I've talked about God already, so that's, not, that's a given. Make integrity one of the cornerstones of your life. Make integrity the core, one of the cornerstones of your life. Now, we talk about integrity a lot, but what does it really, really mean? Integrity means living and loving passionately, always recognizing and acting from our connection and oneness with spirit. When we are connected and centered in divine love, we, we love fully and do everything with great passion. Looking more at this, let us look at, at some more elements of integrity. Integrity is living from that space where we, are, we are, where we are expressing as perfect, whole, and complete. Integrity is being authentic and true to who you are. Integrity is the avoidance of deception and expediency. Integrity is being the same person to everyone. That one stuck with me. Because, you know, we play different roles in our lives. Minister, parent, spouse, manager, director. And so we put on a different mask according to the role that we are playing. In our highest integrity, we are the same fundamental essence in every single role. Integrity is doing what you say you are going to do, keeping your promises, and being a person of your word. Those of us who serve on committees and on groups, and we have things to do at the end where we have to follow up, and at the end of, when we come to the next meeting, oh, you know, I was so busy. I really didn't have the time, you know. I mean, I've been so swamped. That makes us out of integrity. And the key to this is, whenever we're out of integrity, being in integrity means that we do what we need to do to clean it up. <laughs> Another thing that we can do to live that full-blown, out-of-the-box life is to find the music that stirs your soul and listen to more of it. 
Find the music that stirs your soul and listen to more of it. Music is a universal language. It is a powerful social magnet that helps reduce stress and anxiety and stirs up our creative juices. It is a rhythm of head and heart. Music in your car, music while you're working, music, if, you know, just play music. And music, if, you, if it makes you feel like you want to move, then move. That's the power of music. Next thing, exercise the gift of choice wisely. Choice is the purest expression of free will. It's a freedom to choose, and it allows us to shape our lives exactly as we wish, provided, of course, we have the resources to do so. One of the greatest choices we can make is not about what dress to wear or what to select from a menu. It is to live in the present moment, and we've already talked about that. Or to be seduced by the jumble of thoughts of the past or concern about the future. Which would you rather? The past or present? Living in the present, of course. My friends, being here can either be a burden or an exciting adventure. Find out and live your purpose. Do what you love and love what you do. If on a Monday morning it's, oh God, Monday, you have to do some thinking and some visioning. It should be, oh God, morning! That's a whole different energy, a whole different way of being. Love this wonderful temple. This temple too, but this body. This is the only one we have on this plane at this time. Love it. Take care of it. It is perfectly masterfully created to work. All the systems and organs and cells and everything is been, has been masterminded. And we just go along so sometimes and don't do some of the things that we need to do to it. For those listening online, galang means go along. <laughs> Let us spend some more time in nature. One day er, late, er, um, earlier this week, in, in the week past, um, I was called outside. Come quick, come quick. And when I went out, there was a full-blown rainbow across the sky. I mean, it was sometimes you just see a little piece of a rainbow, depending on how the clouds go. But this one was a full arc, and it was bright. I remember in school learning about the colors of the rainbow and, and using an acronym called VIBGAYOR. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. And all those colors were perfectly outlined in that rainbow. And oh God, I, I, I got God bombs. It was just so absolutely beautiful. Live authentically. I mean, be real. We spend a lot of energy just trying to show up as what we think other people want us to, to look like. Demonstrate daily acts of kindness and compassion. Monitor our inner dialogue and self-talk. What are some of the things we are telling ourselves that we can't do? Or, or judgments we have about ourselves or about others. Let's just hold on to that. See, speak, eat, eat, breathe, and live truth. And if you want support and help, you're in the right place. Any minister, practitioner can give us um, the sort of support that um, can help you along on this journey. Another thing to cherish our shortcomings. We scrub sometimes, don't. As much as we know what we know, we think we know what we know. Sometimes we fall off. That's okay, you know, the song says, pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and start all over again. And, and you know, in our vernacular, we say, wheel and come again. Yeah? We need to direct our creative power by serving others. And we can serve in our thriving ministry initiative. We talk about the four quadrants. Any of us, um, Lorna, myself, there's Sonia, um, Reverend Michael, Reverend John, any minister, any practitioner can explain to you about the thriving ministry. And the four quadrants are just four aspects of the work that we are doing. We have raising consciousness, building community, looking at organization, and shifting culture. 
and we really welcome support in any of these four areas. Last but not least, your assignment, <clears throat> if I do a reverend job, should you decide to undertake it, is to get out your bucket list. Some of us have, some of us might not have. Or you might call it something different. But the bucket list is, one, um, as I know it, is what are the things I want to do before I, um, Jerry and Esther Hicks talk about before I croak, um, but before I kick the bucket. You know, some, some exciting thing. Margaret, you're crossing off, right? <laughs> oh, that, no, that's another talk for another Sunday. Just be spontaneous. But get, look, look at some of the things that you would really, really like to do and choose one. Can you think of something that you really would like to do that you haven't done yet on, in this lifetime? Yes? Okay. So you need to ask yourself, how would I feel if I accomplish this? What, in other words, what's in it for me? What would, what would, what, you know, imagine I have done it. I've experienced it. What would I be feeling? Pray for guidance about what it is that you want to do. And when you are so inspired, sit down and make an action plan. Because having the idea is one thing. Getting it manifested is another. Now, a friend of mine have a plan to go to Machu Picchu in Peru next year. It's not going to come off the, 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 the paper. We have to look at what it will cost, when is the right time to go. With, you know, we both started saving for this trip. Who would like to come with us? Machu Picchu, Peru. I see one, two, three, four. oh yeah. So we're going to have a plan. The same way we manifested the cruise, the Science of Mind cruise in 2018, we can manifest Machu Picchu. I'll share more with, with you about that. And remember, any one of us as, as ministers, practitioners, are happy and willing and available to provide support in helping to address some of the, sometimes a little niggling I can't, or to support you to make your dream manifest. I saw this quote and I'm not sure who it is by. Life is too short to wear uncomfortable shoes. And those of us who love shoes, um, <coughs> We know that, you know, if we have to stand at a podium, the shoes must be comfortable. It's more than pretty. If we still, if we are still above ground and breathing, again, I heard this from someone. If we are above ground and breathing, it means that we have work here to do. We have work left to do. There was one member here who was, who seemed to be just so far away from, or close, to, to, to the pearly gates, if there's such a place, which we know that there isn't. And prayer and work and what have you brought him right back. So there's work here for him to do. Not calling any name either. <laughs> right, Reverend Michael? <laughs> we have juice left. We must have juice left. And as Maya Angelou says, in one of her autobiographies. In fact, this is the title of the book. Our lives should be where we are singing and swinging and getting merry like Christmas. Now take a deep breath. Just let it all sink in. Because I'm going to close with a meditation that came from this month's Science of Mind magazine by Reverend Dr. Bob Lukin. He writes Murphy's Dogma, which is, you know, he channels his dog, or the dog channels him. I'm, I don't know, but this is a meditation that comes out. So close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And just let these words wash over you. I pray. Can I get some music? Can I get some music, please? 
I pray conflict and struggles leave your life as quietly and easily as dark clouds on a stormy summer night. I pray that thousands of petals from love's most perfect flowers fall before each step you take and comfort you on your journey. I pray the essence and beauty of every love song ever written fill your heart and ears with joy. I pray the fire in your heart, light in your eyes and wisdom of your soul continue to give you the power and courage to live life fully. I pray you might fully grasp the depth of love that is felt for you. I pray that you always know that you are love. I pray your smiles lead to laughter. I pray that you allow yourself to fly with eagles. And I pray that you find your still small voice and sing joyfully the song of sparrows. Namaste.